I knew that there was the next step. When my rheumatologist spoke to me, she said, you've got the biologics that I'm sure you've heard of. She said, but there's also biosimilars. Welcome to Patient Prep Room, a podcast where we speak to people living with autoimmune arthritis and related conditions, as well as health professionals to fully understand important aspects of living with these conditions. We want to empower patients so they are prepared and ready to be at the centre of their own health and make their disease journey a smooth one. Hi, I'm Naomi Creek, the National Coordinator for Creaky Joints Australia, and I've been managing rheumatoid arthritis since I was 12 years old. The challenges I've faced have made me a passionate advocate for people living with chronic pain. In this episode, we'll be talking about biologic medicines and biosimilars. These are medicines that are used to slow or stop the progression of autoimmune arthritis and reduce disease activity when conventional tablet form medications aren't working well enough for you. Anne Larty Hunt is a nurse that lives in regional Victoria and was diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis in 2012. I was being a gym junkie and my husband and I go in the gym a lot and I was getting sore thumb joints and I went and saw a physio to get some strapping because I thought it was from overworking the joints and then I was having night sweats and of course I'm just going this isn't right and started looking into what it could be and I was diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis in December 2012. I started on of course the bog standard methotrexate so I was on that for a while and then I still didn't have much control. So then we added in Plaquenil and it was still better but not great. And then eventually we added in the Pyrolin. With those three, I got really good control for probably 18 months, two years. After those two years, it looked as though Anne would go into remission. But then her condition spiralled. That is when Anne and her rheumatologist started talking about another way to treat her condition that they hadn't yet tried. I knew that there was the next step. She said, that you've got the biologics that I'm sure you've heard of. She said, but there's also biosimilars. She said, it's not quite the same as a biologic because it's a slightly different compound. She said, but it has the same effect. So what exactly are the scientific differences between a biologic and a biosimilar? Are they even that different? Rheumatologist and clinical pharmacologist, Dr. David Liu explains. There are a lot of medications we can just synthetically produced, so we can make in a factory and just copy exactly. But some of the most important medicines in rheumatology are bigger molecules. They're monoclonal antibodies, just like other antibodies floating around our system. They're big, complex biological things that we just simply can't copy exactly. Not only are they really big in terms of the coding that makes up them, but they do all sorts of things after they're coded which means that they fold in in different ways and they get affected in different ways. And basically, you can't copy them exactly. A biosimilar is the best attempt to be able to try and replicate that, making sure all the important bits are replicated, making sure it works in the same way, but with the knowledge that we can just never, ever copy it. By the time a biosimilar gets to you, the consumer, it's gone through so much of a process to get there. Not only does it have to have the same basic makeup, has to go through the same laboratory test to make sure that's exactly the same in the way that it performs, but it has to go through processes in humans where it does exactly the same, not worse, not better, exactly the same. This is something that you can hand on heart say stacks up against the originator. Anne's rheumatologist discussed the medical differences between biologics and biosimilars, but there were a few other social factors that helped Anne make her decision between choosing a biologic or a biosimilar. She also discussed that it's cheaper for the government as well because she said that's why they've brought them out because biologics are very expensive. One thing I've noticed from a lot of the support groups online is that people really stress about getting their scripts to get their injections Because I'm rural, I was like, I don't want to have to be having that as an extra worry. So I spoke to her about that and she said, well, the good thing about the biosimilars is that they don't need to have the approval every couple of months. Like once you get it, it's I think three months or a year or something. I don't have to wait for Medicare. Even though it's an injection once a week, I thought I'll go with the biosimilar. As long as it works, I don't really care whether it's a biologic or a biosimilar. 
This process that Anne speaks about is known as streamlined authority. Streamlined authority doesn't replace the need for Anne's regular appointments with her rheumatologist. However, it dramatically cuts down her approval time to receive the medication. When prescribing original biologics, rheumatologists must get written authority each time through Medicare via the Pharmaceutical Benefits Scheme or the PBS. This process can take weeks. And that's that process where every six months on the PBS at the moment, I or the treating rheumatologist has to sit down with you or whoever the patient is and go through and fill out some paperwork, scan it into a system, send it off electronically, wait for someone to manually review it and then send it back. And that's a arduous process for everyone. That's only there because of the cost effectiveness imperatives. We need to make sure as a system that patients who are getting it are the ones who are benefiting from it. So basically patients who are going on to biosimilars now, they can get a streamlined approval, which means that they leave the rheumatologist's office with a prescription in hand with a streamlined code on it, which is good to go so that they never have to do the waiting. Having lived for so many years with chronic pain and ongoing symptoms, Anne said it was an easy decision to try new medicine with such promise. Anne's rheumatologist confirmed her eligibility for being prescribed a biosimilar for her rheumatoid arthritis after confirming that enough of her joints were affected by this condition. That's a threshold that's set by the government, which is the same for bio any biologic in terms of rheumatoid arthritis, whether it's the originator, the original biologic, or the biosimilar. Basically, the government wants to see that there are at least 20 joints affected, or it could be four large joints, like knees or shoulders. That's a process that applies for normal biologics or biosimilars, and that's really just about making sure that we're using these medications in the patients who are going to benefit the most. It was a long and painful process for Anne to finally be prescribed a biosimilar over oral medication. She made the switch 12 months ago and noticed a difference within months. The change in my condition has been amazing. The main thing it got rid of was my fatigue. My fatigue's gone. That was my most crippling part of my disease, I felt. Within about two or three months, I just noticed I wasn't fatigued anymore. The pain has reduced, of course, but the pain you can take a tablet for, the fatigue you can't do anything for. So I was, I'm wrapped that that's been the biggest change for me is just not being tired for no reason all the time and then not being out of sleep. It's been life-changing in that regard. As for rheumatologist Dr David Liu, biosimilars are a treatment that he actively prescribes for patients who require it. I trust biosimilars. I'd happily take a biosimilar and I happily change my patients from originators to biosimilars where it's appropriate. Although Anne has had an uphill battle since her diagnosis with rheumatoid arthritis, she worked with her rheumatologist to find the right treatment for her. If you are considering if biosimilars fit into your treatment plan, speak to your rheumatologist. If you want to learn more about biosimilars, listen to our audio guide or find more information at creakyjoints.org.au. Thanks for listening to this episode of Patient Prep Room. Click follow wherever you listen to podcasts and join the Creaky Joints community to receive additional resources to help you live your best life despite arthritis. Join for free at creakyjoints.org.au. Creaky Joints Australia recommends that you always consult with your medical provider to ensure you remain at the centre of your health care.